we'll pretend this new Marvel logo isn't just a little self-indulgent, but the sheer volume of the MCU at this point is pretty astonishing. I've got to give them credit for getting this far. Not every film is cinematic gold, but none are complete garbage either. At first, I thought, alright, even the bad guys are just restraining the library. Oh, never mind. More importantly, Mads Mikkelsen is always a win. Love that hesitation. I could fight... Nah, let's just run. What an opening sequence! We don't know what the mirror dimension is yet, but what a great intro to the Doctor Strange universe type magic. Reminds me a bit of the magic used in Warcraft. It's a melding of Eastern imagery with a Western digital hologram. It's like Scott Derrickson saw Inception and said, I could beat that. Mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. You'll also notice that the Ancient One seems to be super powerful in the mirror dimension, which we find out later makes sense given that she draws power from the Dark Dimension. And we're shown exactly how insane this movie's going to get in this first set piece. This extra's thought bubble reads, isn't she supposed to be an Asian man? Feels so good, Chuck Mangione, 1977. I mean, seriously, you don't think Doctor Strange watched King of the Hill? What is it? GSW. You know, we've come a long way, movie viewing audience. We're at a point in history where probably about 80 to 85% of us have watched enough medical procedurals and whatever you call Grey's Anatomy to know what a GSW is. And the writers are acknowledging that. You harden a bullet by alloying lead with antimony, toxic metal. And that's leached directly into the cerebral spinal fluid. So he's Dr. Strauss? Dr. Hange? Seriously, the level of trivia you need to remember to not only be a world-renowned diagnostician, but also a neurosurgeon? Though, to be fair, they've already set up that he has plenty of useless information rattling around in his head. Hugging. Well, awkward side-hugging. Avengers Tower! I've got a 35-year-old Air Force colonel, crushed his lower spine in some kind of experimental armor. Is that Rhodey? But the timeline doesn't really line up. Plus, the War Machine armor isn't really experimental. Wait, is it supposed to be that guy Justin Hammer trashed in his crappy Iron Man suit knockoff? He did say he survived. That test pilot survived. And you didn't want to work in the ER. This movie has a lot of priority shifts. The speaking engagement was important. So was deciding your next case while speeding down a windy road. Don't text and drive, kids. It probably won't end with you becoming a Sorcerer Supreme. All right, answer me this bachelor's degree. Burn? You care so much, don't you? The first 20 minutes of this film is setting up Strange's arrogance, narcissism, lack of empathy, and, as my wife lovingly calls it, know-it-all-itis. It's a swelling of the know-it-all center of the brain. And they really don't hold back in testing our capacity for sympathy. There are other things that can give your life meaning. Like what? Like you? Sets his ultimate redemption up really well. I know he's not Ezio fighting Templars, but I'm having a hard time not seeing him as such. Ancient one for seeing me. You're very welcome. I know, I know. Whitewashing and female washing? But can you really complain about Tilda Swinton? I mean, really. She is the cast when you need someone who teeters on the line of morality. I see through you! How apropos. Get it? Because now he's see-through? Ah! A butterfly flaps its wings in space and you get sent to LSD land. Ant-Man's Quantum Realm was awesome. But holy crap. That's all I can say. In the theater, my eyes were wide and my jaw was on the floor. Where powers older than time lie ravenous and waiting. Also Dormammu. Have you seen that before in a gift shop? Ancient one, Burn. He reminds you of Caecilius. I cannot lead another gifted student to power only to lose him to the darkness. I think as long as you're clear about the dangers of cannibalism, you should be safe. But then I doubt that Strange is the culinary expert that Hannibal is anyway. The sorcerers of antiquity call the use of this language spells, but if that word offends your modern sensibilities, you can call it a program. See? I'm not crazy! The MCU is still trying its best to explain magic. So if a volume from this collection should be stolen again, you'd be dead before you ever left the compound. Honesty. Thank you for the books and for the horrifying story and for the threat upon my life. And politeness. And don't lose your way. Like Caecilius. That's right. Sparse position. But seriously, combining Caecilius' backstory with some martial arts training is the way to do exposition dumps. You're welcome, Thanos. You know, I've seen things like this before. But the effort he's putting into turning time makes it feel somehow more feasible and realistic. Facial paradoxes, time loops! Dormammu shadowing. You wanna get stuck reliving the same moment over and over forever? Only when I'm bargaining. Of all the unique, magical, mystical weapons I've seen, smoky glass swords slash spears have to be some of my favorites. It's strange. Maybe. Who am I to judge? Impartiality. 
Strange's first real conflict is a great stepping stone for his character. It establishes that he still has so much to learn, even if he does have a photographic memory and was born for the Mystic Arts. Another upping of the ante from Inception with this crazy gravity. Easiest way to get rid of foes. Throw them through a spatial portal and close the door. Saving Doctor Strange. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but Doctor Strange loves axes. Magical relic created by Quagmire. We don't seek to rule this world. We seek to save it, to hand it over to a Dormammu who is the intent of all evolution. <sighs> Mads Mikkelsen is amazing, and Kaecilius is another fairly complex villain. He's not out to rule the world. In his own misunderstood way, he's trying to save it. Similar to the way Vicky almost destroyed the world, but tried to save it nonetheless. And since I've talked about dialogue and character framing of exposition in past videos, here's an example of a close-up that's done correctly. We're drawn into Caecilius, so close that we see the tears welling in his eyes, endearing us to him for a moment while his words distance us from the Ancient One. The real magic she keeps for herself. Here comes Deadpool Beta version 1.0. Cloak of Levitation to the rescue again! What are you wearing? Uh, an awesome outfit you'd be lucky to don. The rules of astral throwdowns are a little confusing to me. Sometimes you stop at walls, sometimes you go through them. Seems like maybe you choose what you interact with. But I really don't care, because this is fantastic. Any opportunity to show off Scott Atkins' skills without sword hands is welcome. And it's finally Arnold Rothstein's lucky day. I treated you so horribly and you deserved so much more. Honesty. A powerful sorcerer gave himself over to an ancient entity, combined the very laws of physics, tried very hard to kill me. Just loads of honesty. Yep. Don't even care that that was in the trailer. Yep. When I became a doctor, I swore an oath to do no harm, and I have just killed a man. I'm not doing that again. This is one thing that makes Strange unique and gives him a softer side I don't even think he knew he had. It's right about now that Christopher Nolan is thinking, oh, so that's what I could have done. The Doors of Perception was about a mescaline trip, but I think most of what Doctor Strange experiences is closer to LSD. Although I doubt Stan Lee, or for that matter, Aldous Huxley would carry either way. This was a mistake. Admitting when you're wrong. Also this face. I mean, this would have made MC Escher wish he was more creative. Heck yeah. The mix of martial arts choreography and special effects magic give the action sequences in this film such a distinct feel. It's not about you. This conversation outside of time as the Ancient One comes to terms with her life and death is a moving scene, but I truly love this camera pan around her head showing us a different perspective as Doctor Strange is finally able to see a different perspective. Haha, <laughs> that's the least odd thing I've seen all week. Because there are other ways to save lives. A harder way. A weirder way. <laughs> Don't you mean a stranger way? Eh? <laughs> Sherlock moment undercut by the helpful cloak. Sector's already fallen. It's too late. I wouldn't call it a theme necessarily, more of a motif, but it's at this point that you realize the camera's obsession with wristwatches was more than just Strange's hidden love for Christine. Cover your watch. You don't have time. Time is relative. They've been leading to this the entire time. Don't trust time. Another fun little setup is that his watch is broken and now he's about to really break time. This is another one of those times when I have to mention that we've had a fun MCU action film with magic and martial arts and good character developments up until this point. And then you start throwing time turning into the mix? Come on! Everything moving backwards around them as they fight? Come on! And these people running in reverse is pretty comical. That's Edgar Allan Poe style brutal. What's with this movie pulling up all these literary and artistic references in my brain? I can't be the only one. Romamu. I've come to bargain! Do you think Cumberbatch knew he was creating a meme the first time he said those words? Dormammu has an interesting design. He's not quite the same as in the comics, and I get a slight parallax vibe from him, but these are the stakes these days. In order to conquer worlds, you need to be larger than them. And a fun fact, Benedict Cumberbatch did the motion capture for Dormammu. Which, when you think about it, sort of makes sense. Why would a non-corporeal being have eyes, a mouth, or a face at all? He would just mirror Strange to make it easier to communicate. And he's a pretty accomplished adversary. The time loop creates a situation where he doesn't have to hold back. At all. But everyone on Earth will live. But you will suffer. Pain's an old friend. Self-sacrifice. You will never win. No. 
but I could lose again and again forever. I mean, some real self-sacrifice. And your assault on my world. Never come back. Do it, and I'll break the loop. Negotiation skills. Yeah, you know, you really should have stolen the whole book because the warnings come after the spells. <laughs> Even Wong appreciates a good callback. We broke our rules just like her. I will follow this path no longer. Mordo's faith was so wrapped up in the Ancient One, once he realized even she could be compromised, he was lost. Just a solid character arc. That's not to walk the streets wearing an infinity stole. A what? You might have a gift for the Mystic Gods, but you still have much to learn. I know it's old news at this point, and some of you may already be getting sick of it, but I'm still in love with this connected universe. And every time someone says something like this, I'm Captain America sitting in the helicarrier in Avengers thinking, I understood that reference. Sometimes feeling what they want you to feel is okay. In fact, sometimes it actually brings you joy. Just try it. That's all I ask. Maybe a little reminder to stop breaking time? And, you know, also as a reminder that people are what really matter. Not possessions, not reputations or status, not even time. Where the inclusion? Ah, <laughs> alcoholism. Allow me to help you. Helping an Avenger. Ha! Get it? Because it looks like a sling ring? Showing your inspiration hand, Marvel. Too many sorcerers. I've been saying that for years. I've sort of dodged this the whole movie, and I'm not the first to notice, but come on, Jakino. We love you, but don't pill for your own scores, especially movies that share an actor. Still love you. You're still amazing. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and assume you hadn't listened to your Star Trek theme in a while. I was even more depressed when I found out the music in the trailer was made by a production house called High Finesse that pretty exclusively scores trailers. This scene in particular had way more punch in the trailer because of the music. Side note, if you want to get all pumped up and feel like your life is a movie trailer, go to their website and listen to all their Axiom 3 tracks while you work out. And something about the trailer in general had me nervous this movie was going to be awful. Generally speaking, some of my favorite trailers belong to some of the worst movies. I was happy to be wrong. So, this is magic. I'm not going to deny that. But it's not exactly the mystical magic that we often get in fantasy. Much like the show I highly recommend The Magicians, it's a learned discipline, exactly as the Ancient One says. Even if this is magic, Kevin Feige is trying to ground it in as much reality as he can. I didn't come up with the no magic in the MCU theory on my own. It was a quote from Kevin Feige where he basically says our universe is already magic. This has just become my dumb little stubborn thing. I don't really care if there is straight up magic. And I hope that the Doctor Strange purists were pleased by the representation of magic in this film. If your biggest problem with science over magic is that anyone can use science, number one, I can read every book on neurosurgery and I'll still kill everyone's brain I touch. And number two, they make it pretty clear that Strange has the gift. I have to say I wouldn't have expected this quality or style from Scott Derrickson. He's pretty exclusively a horror director and writer, but if there's one thing the MCU has done, it's give these smaller directors their day in the sun. One other tiny complaint would be some of the forced humor. I smiled in theaters. On second watch, I sort of felt like I was being pandered to a bit, Especially when the Cape of Levitation actually created some genuinely funny moments. So why force pop culture jokes? Not a deal breaker, and the jokes didn't land with Wong either. So... There are some pretty clear parallels that illustrate the shift of Doctor Strange's priorities. Ultimately, it's just his hierarchy of needs, but the opening shows us all the things he takes for granted. Scrubbing before surgery, shaving, the fear of ruining one's reputation, and then when the coin is flipped, he gains some perspective. Throughout the movie, Strange is shown to be totally adept at learning and practicing. Discipline and studying have always been his strongest assets. But he skips steps that put him in serious danger. If it weren't for the Cloak of Levitation, he'd definitely be dead. There were complaints that he went from Stranded on Everest to opening the Eye of Agamotto in a matter of days. My assumption the first time watching was that while they sadly skipped the studying training montage to get us there, quite a bit of time had passed when he entered wearing these new clothes. And even after he impresses Wong and Mordo, he's still using a magic rope as his weapon. Kind of like the Green Lantern using a giant fist. I really love that Strange has a different take on superheroing than most other superheroes. Sure, Batman doesn't usually kill people, the Avengers try to minimize casualties, but Strange is one of the first in the MCU to immediately feel guilt after killing someone, even in self-defense because of the oath he took as a medical professional. He didn't need any angry mothers to confront him while waiting for an elevator. It affects him instantly, and he takes a different approach to saving the world. It goes without saying that this film had some of the most amazing visuals in recent memory. The world-bending effects combined with the sound design are all truly impressive and engrossing. Open your eyes. His first dimension hopping scene is probably as close to taking hallucinogens as I'll ever get. Another thing this movie really excels at is creating solid character motivations. I touched on Kaecilius' motivations and what makes him more than a one-dimensional baddie. Twisted though he was, he believed his intentions to be honorable. The Ancient One, on the other hand, has been using evil methods to prolong her life in order to serve the greater good. And even in her final moments, she exposed her fallibility. But look at me, stretching one moment out into a thousand, just so that I can watch the snow. All the supporting cast was great. Rachel McAdams is always fine, although Rosario Dawson's Claire Temple is still my continuity. Hashtag not my night nurse. 
Chiwetel Ejiofor knocked it out of the park. I'm super excited for him to be our next villain in this universe. I loved every moment that he and Strange had together. And even One Eye himself. I mean, Galen Erso. I mean, Le Chief had one of the funnier moments in the film. Mr. Doctor. Mr. Doctor. Exciting news is that Strange is confirmed to make some kind of appearance in Thor 3. Might be a scene, might just be a cameo, could actually just be a quid pro quo end credit stinger. But come on. Buddy cop movie with dry humorless Strange and fish out of water unintentionally intentionally hilarious Thor? Throw a giant green monster in there and you've got yourself a movie. Don't mess up Planet Hulk. We believe in you Marvel. We believe in you. Who am I to judge? Dormammu, I come to bargain. Dormammu, I come to bargain. Dormammu, I come to bargain. Dormammu, 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 I've come to bargain.